Six Point A Principal Component Analysis, or PCA for short. This is a tool, a linear algebra tool that is useful in many many applications. Let's look at an example to see where PCA can be of use. This is a table of some tests. Um, a group of patients did at a hospital. For example, we have blood pressure. This one test is a blood pressure, and we have the blood pressure of patient one, which is one hundred and thirty. And patient two, which is one hundred and forty-four, and for each patient, we record the blood pressure. Or, for example, this is the cholesterol level. For the first patient, it stands at twenty, and for the second patient, it's at thirty-five. We record the cholesterol level for each patient. In practice, we can have many, many more tests. So there can be many, many more tests, and、uh, we can have many, many more patients. And we have a large table, a very large table. For example, we can have a million patients and hundreds of tests. So we have a large amount of data. For now, for the last. Duration purpose. Let us stick to only a few tests and、um, a small number of patients. Let's give some names, terminology.、Um, we call each test a variable. So, for example, blood pressure is a variable, and cholesterol level is a variable. Each of these tests is a variable: x one, x two, x three, x four to x seven. And we call the numbers that we have for these patients、uh, observations. So, for example, x one for the variable x one, we have six observations: one hundred thirty, one hundred forty-four, one hundred twenty, continuum on like this. This we have six observations. We call these observations or samples. In data analysis, there can be many variables, and the question that we would like to ask here is: Is it possible to reduce the number of variables because we could have hundreds of variables? Is it possible to use a few variables to represent these variables? That's these hundreds of variables, and that means a reduction in dimension. And that's what we are trying to do here with the PCA, principal component analysis. We can indeed reduce the dimension. We can use fewer variables, new fewer variables, and、uh, to represent the vast number of variables. And this new fewer variables are what we call principal components. For the convenience of explanation, I have generated a toy example.、Um, here we have four variables: x, y, p, q. The first variable is math midterm score. The second variable is math final. And、uh, we have seven observations. For the first variable x, we have、um, observation twenty, forty, ninety, eighty, like so, and we can expect that there is probably going to be some relation between the first variable math midterm and the second variable y math final. The third variable is the balls of rice eaten on Wednesday for each of these students. So for the first student, the number of balls of rice eaten on Wednesday is three. So this student has eaten three balls of rice on Wednesday, and the next student has four balls of rice on Wednesday. And Q is the weight of these seven students. The first student has a sixty kilo kilogram. 
and the second student eighty kg, and we would also expect there could be some relation between the variable Q and the variable P. Before we start with the actual analysis, we usually prepare the variables. That is, we convert them to scaled variables. Let's use the student example with only one variable, the midterm score. We have this variable x and、uh, it has some observations. We collect these observations into one vector. We call these observation x one, x two to x seven because now we have seven observation, and in general we would have an m observation and we. Have x one to x n. We define sample mean of observation x one to x n, which is simply the average of these observations. We call the mean of the observations or sample mean of the observations. We also define the sample variance of the observations x one to x n, or Just the variance of the observations. We take the difference of x one and x bar. X bar is the mean here, difference square, and、uh, the difference of x two and x bar square. We sum up all these squares and divide it by n minus one, and this is what we call sample variance of the observation. It's denoted by s x square. We also define something called sample variance of observation x one to x m. We take the difference of x one and x bar. X bar is the sample variance here, sample mean here. Difference is square. X two and x bar difference is square. We sum up all these square of differences and divide it by n minus one. This is what we call. Sample variance of the observations, or simply variance of the observations, for short. It may seem a little bit weird that we are using the factor one over n minus one instead of the factor one over n. After all, we have n observations here. The reason that one over n minus one is used is because that can be shown that using such a factor gives a more accurate estimate of a variance if. These x one to x m are observations of a random variable with a certain variance. We can also write this sample variance as x minus x bar vector. This x bar vector is a vector that each element is the same x bar. X bar is the sample mean here, and we can write it as the Norm square of x minus x bar divided by n minus one. In data analysis, we usually work with variables with zero mean and unit variance, and that these are what we call scaled variables. So now, given a whole bunch of variables, how do we convert them to scaled variables? To get Zero mean variables. We subtract the mean. We define w as x minus x bar. Then, if we compute the mean of w, which is one over m, and w one to w m, then we get one over m. We take all these x together, x one plus x m minus x bar, because there are m x bar here divided by m. We get x bar. And the first part is simply the mean of x, so we get zero. The mean of w is zero. We get a zero mean variable. When we subtract the mean, what happened to the variance? We compute the variance w. H w is so one over m w one to w m square. We plug in w one is x one minus x bar. W m is x m minus x bar, so this is exactly the variance of x. 
This means if we subtract the mean or perform a shift, it does not affect the variance. Now, what should we do so that the variable has a unit variance? We define z as follows: w is the same as w here, x with the mean subtracted, divided by s x. S x is the variance, and here is the sc scalar. Here is s x. Then z still has a zero mean, and the variance of z, by definition, is one over m minus one z one squared to z m squared. Which is the same as sum of w square with an extra factor here, one over s x square, and we recognize this part is the variance of w, and we already know that w variance is the same as the variance of x, so we get one, and x z would have a unit variance. So this means that if we take x, subtract mean from x, and divide it by s x, this is z new variable. It has zero mean, and、uh, it has a unit variance. And such a z is called a scaled variable. Just now we consider only one variable. Now let's consider two variables. Suppose we have two variables x and y, and the sample covariance of x and y is defined as follows: it's the dot product of x minus x bar and y minus y bar divided by m minus one, or we can write it in the form of a summation like this. One thing that we can observe is that if we compute at conf x x, plug in x here, then we get exactly the same as variance of x. And another thing that we can observe is that if we have x y that are zero mean, then the covariance of x and y is can be simply put as x transpose y. Divided by m minus one. Now let's go back to our one variable example that we had earlier. Suppose this is our one variable, and this is the vector. We can compute the mean by going out the number, which is the average of these seven numbers here. It's six three point six. We can subtract this mean from this x vector. We get w, which would be zero mean, and we can scale it so that this z vector, this z variable, has a unit variance. If we have four variables, we can do the same thing to each variable so that each variable is a scaled variable. We have the first variable here. We convert it. We subtract the mean and、uh, scale that so that it becomes a zero mean unit variance variable. For this variable, we do the same thing: subtract the mean of the variable and scale that so that the resulting variable has zero mean and the unit variance. We do this for each variable. So now each variable is converted to a scaled variable. Zero mean and the unit variance. For convenience, we still call this x y t z. From this point down, we will work with the scaled variables. Given n variables w one to w n, and each of these variable is an n by one vector, we define w matrix as w is a collection of these n variable, and w bar is W one bar all the way to W n bar. The covariance matrix is defined as like so. The covariance matrix C is W minus W bar transpose W minus W bar divided by n minus one. Just now we have two variables, so we define the covariance of two variables. Now we have n variables. 
and we define the covariance matrix. So, what is the meaning of covariance matrix? For convenience, we consider these W to be scaled variables. In this particular case, C is one over M, and W transpose W. There's no bar here because of zero mean. And、uh, we look at the each element C I J of this C matrix. It will simply be W I transpose W J divided by M minus one, and this is exactly the covariance of W I and W J. So the element of the covariance matrix is simply the covariance of individual. Variables, and in particular, if we look at the C I I, that will be cover W I W I, which is the variance of a W I vector, and for scaled variables, this is equal to one. So this covariance matrix for scaled variables has a very special form. It's C, and then one, and the diagonal. And it can actually be shown that C I J has a value between minus one and one. So these values here are the covariance of W I and W J, and the value is between minus one and one. Another thing that we can observe is C is a symmetric. If we look at the Definition here. It's a、uh, symmetric matrix by definition, so it's diagonalizable, and we can have this form P D P transpose. We will see how the diagonalizability of this C matrix can be used later. Consider the student example with two variables, only two variables x and y. Then we can form the W matrix x and y, and this covariance matrix by definition one over m W transpose W, because it, these variables are now scaled variables. So I can directly put down one over m W transpose W. If we work out the numbers, this is our C matrix here. We can get a Different perspective of the variables by putting them down on a graph. So, for example, we put treat this as a vector, and this is a vector with a u i to be x i y i. Then u one would be minus one seven, minus one six, and we put down the coordinate here of a u one. Minus one seven and minus one six, so this will be the coordinate of u one. And u two is minus point nine and the minus one zero and point、uh, one nine and、uh, minus one zero, so that will be the coordinate of u two. Similarly, this is the coordinate of u three. And、uh, we put down the coordinate of all these u vectors, and this W matrix now can be written as u one transpose to u m transpose.